Hello, and welcome to Learning Across Kansas. I'm Tabitha Rossbroy, and I'll be your host for today's episode. Learning Across Kansas is a partnership between the Kansas Department of Education and the Public Broadcasting Service. It's our goal to bring enriching activities into your home while we deal with the physical distancing and health issues that face our society. And we hope to have a little fun along the way too. Today's episode is near and dear to my heart because it is all about Kansas. Kansas is where I live, and if you're watching this show, you probably live in Kansas too. We are all citizens of Kansas, and that's something that connects us. We're all part of one big community. There are so many special things about Kansas that we are going to learn today. First, we are going to go and see Mrs. Rogers from Derby, and she is going to talk to us all about our state symbols. Then we're going to hear from Mrs. Nobach, who's going to teach us our state song. I can't wait to find out what they have to say. Let's go. Hey there, friends. Mrs. Rogers here, and I'm so excited to see you today. We're going to have so much fun. Today, we're learning all about the great state of Kansas, this beautiful state that I'm so happy and proud to call my home. And today, friends, the spotlight is on you. I want to know what you know about Kansas. So we're going to play a little bit of a game to see what state symbols you know. Want to make this an extra fun treat? Call someone into the room and see who can name that state symbol first. Are you ready to play? Here we go. Round one. All right, friends. First, we're looking for the state insect. Do you think you know? Let's see. It is the honeybee. Well, of course we know honeybees are so important in making honey for us, but not only that, did you know that honeybees are so important in pollinating plants so that flowers, fruits, and vegetables can grow? And every beehive needs a queen bee. Did you know that queen bees can lay up to 2,500 eggs in one day in the summer? That's some serious business. <laughs> Get ready for round two. Okay, friends, next we're looking for the state flower and I have a feeling you might know what it is. Of course it is, it's the sunflower. Have you ever driven by or walked through a sunflower field before? So pretty. And these beautiful flowers can grow up to 10 feet tall. Isn't that huge? And their seeds sure make a tasty snack in the summertime. You might see it out on the baseball field. Sunflower seeds, have you had them before? Mm, I sure love them. All right, get ready for round three. Okay, friends, this one's a tricky one. We're looking for the state bird. It's the Western Meadowlark. The Western Meadowlark is one popular bird. It is the second most popular state bird and the state bird for six different states. Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, Oregon, Wyoming, and of course, Kansas. How many of these fantastic facts did you know? Did you learn something new? I hope you did, cool Kansas kids. Well, I can't wait to see you again next time. I hope you had lots of fun. I know I did. I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, hi, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Nobach. I am so excited. Today's show is all about Kansas. And I just got to tell you something. This is really cool. I have a famous Kansan in my family. Yes, it's my Uncle Clyde Tombaugh. He discovered the planet Pluto way back in 1930. And growing up in Kansas, I have to wonder, did he know the state song of Kansas? Wait, do you know the state song of Kansas? It's home on the range, that's right. And we are going to sing this song in our lesson, so we need to remember to use our nice light singing voices, have our backs up straight. And in our lesson, we're going to learn how Home on the Range moves in three. Well, to find the answer to our question earlier, we need to look at the music notation for this song. 
If you'll notice, there's a blue arrow pointing to 3 over 4 at the beginning of the song. That is called a time signature. And the top number 3 tells us that there are going to be 3 beats in a measure. Well, what's a measure? A measure is the space between the red lines that you see. And how do we know it's going to be 3 beats? Easy. A quarter note gets 1 beat. A half note gets 2 beats. And a dotted half note gets Three. And above the notation in the green bars, you see that the, that the notation has been counted. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So boys and girls, home on the range has three beats in a measure. That's how it moves in three. Well, boys and girls, it's time to sing. Let's remember, use our nice light singing voices, back up straight. And to make sure we do that one, two, three feeling of home on the range, I'm going to move my fingers like this. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play. Well, seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Home, home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Wonderful job, boys and girls. Thank you very much for singing with Mrs. Nobach. Have a wonderful day. That is one of my favorite songs. Thank you, Mrs. Nobach. I listen to that and I sing it in my car when I'm driving or when I'm working in my garden and it reminds me of all of the beautiful things that we have in Kansas. Now if you've been watching our show for a while, you know that I'm growing sunflower seedlings in my garden that kind of look like this right now. And I am going to show you what they're going to look like when they're all grown up as soon as we hear from this next message. We'll be right back. Kansas school buildings may be closed for the remainder of the academic year, but school is still in session. Keeping students engaged in the learning process during this extraordinary time is critical for their ongoing success. We salute our teachers, parents, and guardians who are committed to ensuring their students finish this year strong. We're all ready for our lives to get back to normal, but until that time, Kansas students, keep learning and keep working towards your goals. Together, Kansans can. Welcome back. Here is what my sunflower seedlings will look like when they've all grown up. See these beautiful yellow petals on the sunflower? There are many different breeds of sunflower and this is just one of them. Our next segments will be hearing from Mrs. Henwood who is going to teach us about a very special author in some of his books. Then we'll hear from Mrs. Clark who is going to teach us about a unique art form that we've maybe never seen before. Let's go. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, we have had so many home improvement projects going on at our house that I decided today I would take some time and go through some of our old books and decide if there's some that we'd like to keep or maybe there might be some we'd like to donate to the community. So I've been going through these books and I've been finding some of my favorites and some of the ones that my kids love to listen to over and over again, like Fox and Socks by Dr. Seuss. And if you give a pig a pancake, there's a whole series of these by Laura Numeroff and they're amazing. And my all time favorite, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. These books bring back a lot of memories. I wonder, there's so many good authors out there. I wonder, what are some of your favorite books? Yes, those are great selections. You have great taste in books. You know, there's actually a famous author from Kansas who has a children's book award named after him. Let's learn a little bit about William Allen White. William Allen White was a nationally famous newspaperman and author. He and his wife lived in Emporia, Kansas for 45 years. His house, Red Rocks, is a Kansas State historical site. Each year, students across the state of Kansas read and vote on the William Allen White Children's Book Award. 
These books are some of the award-winning books from the past several years. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about William Allen White and the William Allen White Children's Book Award. The next time you go to the library, you might look for some of those titles, or you might ask someone for the William Allen White Children's Book Award section. There are books that can take you anywhere. You could be a princess in a castle. They can just take you on adventures that you never thought possible. I wish you a great day of reading. Curl up with a great book and relax. See you next time. Hello artists. Thanks for joining me today as we learn about Kansas. I was wondering, have you ever made a work of art that you really loved and you wish you had more copies of the exact same image? Well, there's an artistic process for that. It's called printmaking. And today we're gonna to talk about printmaking and its connection to Kansas. Printmaking is making an image that can be transferred to another piece. So artists build up the surface of the print block like this or carve into the surface, ink it up, and then transfer the image to a piece of paper. You may have done stenciling or stamping at home like this before. Let's look at some prints together. Kansas printmaker C.A. Seward had a passion for printmaking. He was born in Chase, Kansas in 1884. Here's a few of his works from the Wichita Art Museum collection. Seward was known for his prints, many of which were displayed at important museums around the world during his lifetime. In 1930, he joined with other artists to form the Prairie Printmaker Group. These artists worked and learned together and brought artworks to Kansans that they could afford. They didn't cost much because you could make lots of copies of one artwork. Teamwork like this is called collaboration. How can you make prints like Seward? Well, try creating a collagraph with cardboard. Cut and glue shapes down to a cardboard surface. I made our state flower the sunflower. You can print it by painting on top with temper paint and pressing the paper onto it. The shapes that stick up will copy onto your paper. Now, prints have an interesting texture and don't always look perfect, but that's okay. When they're dry, you can always color in your print to add other colors. Or try making a texture rubbing of your collagraph by putting a paper on top and rubbing with crayons. The second way you can print is by making a styrofoam block print. Draw your image gently onto a styrofoam plate or a clean meat tray to make a dent with your pencil. Don't poke all the way through. Then turn your marker on its side to cover over the flat part of the plate. The dented in lines won't get ink and will remain white in your print. I spritzed my printing plate with some water from a spray bottle before putting the paper on top. Voila! A beautiful Kansas meadowlark, our state bird symbol. I hope you get to visit the Wichita Art Museum when it's open so you can see Seward's artwork in person. And I hope you enjoy printmaking at home. Happy creating, artists! Wow! I've read a lot of those books on the William Allen White reading list. And I did printmaking when I was in art class in school, but I never knew that you could do it at home. That is so awesome. We'll be right back after this message. Being a Globetrotter, you, you get to bring a whole family together. PBS gives your kids and your family a little foundation. With Arthur, you're able to relate to some of the messages as far as going to school, interacting with other kids, how to handle a bully. PBS is going to help your kids grow. I'd rather my kids get that experience from something that I trust that I grew up on, like PBS. Hello again. Did you guys know that there are many Kansans who have changed the world just like William Allen White? In our next segment, we are going to learn from Mrs. Levenstein about some other famous Kansans. Then we're going to head out onto the prairie with Mrs. Wynn as we learn about what makes our prairie landscape so special and unique. Let's go. Looks like you found me. I've been just sitting out here on a prairie in Kansas reading a book about a little girl who used to live on a prairie. Do you happen to know what the name of the book might be? If you guess Little House on the Prairie, you're right. It's a book written by someone named Laura Ingalls Wilder. And when she was a little girl, she actually did live in Kansas. 
She's considered one of our famous Kansans, but she's not our only famous Kansan. We have a lot of people who have ties to Kansas who have impacted us in really good ways. Well today, instead of me teaching you about them, I'm going to let some of the students in our state teach you about them, and they are going to even pretend to be some of these Kansans. I can't wait. Come on, let's go watch them. Hello, I'm Hattie McDaniel. I was the first African American to win an Oscar. Clyde Cessna was the founder of the Cessna Aircraft Corporation. My name is Walter Chrysler. I invented the Chrysler Corporation with many amazing cars. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo over the Atlantic Ocean. I am Mira Kaufman, and I am famous because my husband and I are the founders of Kansas City Royal. Georgia niece Clark Gray was the first woman treasurer of the United States. Dwight D. Eisenhower was our 34th president. Hi, I'm Suzanne Salter. I am famous because I was the first woman to be a politician in Kansas. Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote the children's book series called Little House on the Prairie. Hello, my name is Russell Stover. I am famous for my candy, chocolate, and Eskimo pies. Melissa Etheridge is a singer, songwriter, and a guitarist. Hi, my name is Susanna Medora Salter. I'm famous for being the first female mayor in Kansas. Hi, I'm Wyatt Earp. I fought in the OK Corral gunfight, and it was 30 seconds long. I hope you enjoyed learning about these famous Kansans as much as I did today. And our students from this state were amazing. Wasn't it fun to see how some of our Kansans have been writers, they've been pilots, a president of the United States, inventors, and even a chocolate maker. It really helped to inspire me to be the best that I can be. Well, I've got to get back to my book. This part about the wolves is making me really nervous and I need to find out what happens. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Hi, and welcome to the Kansas Prairie. You are right here in Western Kansas. And you know, I hear of people um, talking as they drive through Kansas and say, there's nothing out there but flat land. Well, they are wrong. Let me introduce you to the prairie and some of the plants that live here. I'm gonna tell you about my three favorite. The first one I wanna talk to you about is right here. It's called Black Samson. Now, this one has a big tap root. And this tap root has been used for a lot of different things in the past. People used to chew on the root to help with a toothache. They've swallowed some of it to help with a th sore throat. They've even sold these tap roots to pharmacists to turn into medicine. This is another plant that lives out here on the prairie. It's called a yucca plant. Some people have even nicknamed it a soapweed because um, ancient Indian tribes used to dig the yucca plant up. They would pound the root and make soap out of it to do their washing. They used this plant all over the prairie because not only did they make soap out of it, they also used all of these leaves to make ropes and uh, rugs and different things out of it. They also used the flower to eat. They, um, some animals like deer and cattle still eat the flowers off of yucca plants. The prickly pear cactus right here is another one of my favorite prairie um, plants because they're so useful. You can take the spines off of the cactus and you can eat them. You can feed them to your animals. I even have a friend that makes prickly pear jelly out of these prairie cactuses. There's this little black bug that lives on the underside of the prickly pear cactus. It lives in a white webbing. People used to very carefully take the white webbing off of the cactus and squish it with their finger. Then they used the red for food dye, 
They used it to dye the um, fabrics that they used. They even used them for war paint. Come visit the prairie to learn more about other Kansas prairie. Oh my goodness, I never knew there were so many types of prairie grass around where I live. And Mrs. Lovenstein's segment got me thinking, I wonder how many future famous Kansans are watching this show right now. I bet if you keep on learning, you guys are going to find a way to change the world. We'll be right back after this message. Hey parents, you're doing great. With Kansas school buildings closed and homes being turned into classrooms, parents and caregivers have expanded their roles in their students' learning. This is a new experience for most of us, so let's show one another a little grace. When you and your students start to feel overwhelmed or stressed, take a break. It's really okay. Keeping students interested and engaged in learning is the key to success. Remember, you have an entire community of fellow caregivers and teachers to lean on. Reach out. Together, Kansans can. Welcome back. Our last two segments are also super cool and also very Kansas. First, Mrs. Schneider is gonna take us on a tour of the Capitol building in our beautiful capital city, Topeka. Then, Mrs. Baugh is going to teach us about a very famous sport in Kansas. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Let's go find out. Greetings from Topeka, Kansas, our state capital. C-A-P-I-T-A-L. Our state capital is where government officials work to make rules, laws, and procedures for our state. All right, so here I am at the capital, C-A-P-I-T-O-L. This was built in 1901. I'm gonna show you some pictures of everything inside. This first mural was created by John Stuart Curry in the 1940s. It shows the famous John Brown who fought for Kansas to be a free state. It shows what the settlers went through during that time period in the 1860s. This second mural was recently added in 2018 outside the old Kansas Supreme Court room. It recognizes the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education case that ended segregation and allowed kids of any color to go to school together. The interior or inside view of the dome has 256 glass panels and the chandelier weighs over 900 pounds. Here in the rotunda are my friends, the Evans and Robinson families. There are six flags hanging that represent the six nations or states that claimed part of Kansas. This shows a section of the dome windows and can be found in the visitor center. My daughter Sydney and her friend Taryn were in fourth grade when we visited the Capitol. You can see how big this one section is. The Capitol is also home to the state library. The cool thing about this area is that the upper section has a glass floor. This photo shows the Senate chambers. It has cherry wood desks that the senators sit at and many marble columns. The details are beautiful. Here are my friends Gabe and Lauren on the Senate floor. This photo shows the House of Representatives Hall. It also has marble columns and murals on the ceiling. When visiting the Capitol, you can also take a tour of the dome this includes walking up 296 steps to the very top of the dome and then walking around outside to see the city. Here is my friend Elise going up the last few stairs before heading outside with her dad Nathan. She completed the whole journey. I've done this myself two times in the last seven years as well. Hopefully sometime soon you can come to Topeka and visit the capital yourself. For more information about the Capitol and tours, you may go to the Kansas Historical Society website. Hello everybody, Mrs. Baugh here for some PE. Stand up, give yourself some space. Are you ready? Today I want you to guess what game I'm talking about by the movements we do. Then I'm going to have a special friend who's going to give you some more hints about what we're talking about. And then we're gonna talk about a famous Kansan and what they have to do with the game we're playing. Okay, are you ready? In this game, you do some running, so run with me. Here we go.
Good job. Okay, also in this game, you have to lift your hands up high and move them around. Can you do that? Do it with me. All right. And also in this game, you have to bend your knees and move to the side with your hands up. Sometimes you have to move forward or backwards, back to the side. Can you do it? Good job. All right. My friend's going to join us now for some more hints. In this clip, what is he doing? Hmm. Is he pushing something down maybe? I don't know. Now he's moving all around. Do you know what game he's playing? What's he doing here? Bending and jumping and maybe trying to aim at a basket? Okay, friends, I bet you figured out we were talking about basketball, right? So Dr. Naismith, who is the creator of basketball, he actually taught and coached at the University in Kansas in Lawrence. That's also where the rules of basketball are kept. My friend Blaine played basketball today without any equipment. That's called shadow ball. If you go to openphyzed.org, there's a lesson plan that tells you the history behind shadow ball and how you can play multiple different games that way. We're going to leave today with a special little message from our friend Blaine. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, my name is Blaine Coffey, and I'm a fifth grader from Lynn Elementary in Dodge City, Kansas. The thing I like most about basketball is how you have to play offense and defense at the same time. I like this because it keeps your mind working. Wow, I never knew that the man who invented basketball coached in Kansas. That is so cool. I also love to visit our Capitol building. It is one of the most beautiful and historic Capitol buildings in our whole country. I've sure loved learning about Kansas with all of you today. I know that Kansas has a rich history, it has beautiful landscapes, and it has incredible educators and students like the ones we heard from today. On behalf of those Kansas educators, we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you again soon. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Learning Across Kansas. I'm Tabitha Rossbroy, and I'll see you next time.